of heated discussions on global and urgent topics in the heart of Eurasia. Annual Astana Economic Forum marked its 10th anniversary this summer. The forum attracted more than 4,000 bright minds, experts, decision makers and businessmen who joined efforts to find common solutions and ways for an improved and sustainable economic development. Decisions that were made here can change the global market trends. Уважаемые дамы и господа, наш юбилейный Астанинский экономический форум Dear ladies and gentlemen, the Athens Astana Economic Forum is being held at a historically crucial moment. A week ago, the SCO summit took place in Astana. A new global player with a market capacity of 3 billion people was created by India and Pakistan, joining the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The SCO countries' participation in the development of the new Silk Road program creates a new economic subregion. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez noted that the organization is an important foundation of today's world order. President Nursultan Nazarbayev opened the plenary session in the Congress Center on the territory of Expo amid the ongoing specialized international exhibition focusing on future energy. This was not a coincidence as the economic forum evolved around a related theme of new energy, new economy, symbolizing a turning point for the world and indicating that it is time for a change. Game-changing initiatives in finance and economy were proposed and discussed at the forum. In a pragmatic manner, President Sultan Nazarbayev urged the world community for a global transformation. It is time to consider the introduction of the global payment unit. This will save the world from currency wars, speculation, avoid distortions in trade relations and reduce volatility in the markets. The currency should have a simple transparent mechanism of emission subject to its consumers. A payment unit can be created in the form of a cryptocurrency taking into account digitalization and blockchain development. In the era of global changes, the Astana Economic Forum is becoming the most important international dialogue platform for the entire Eurasia, where a highly reputed expert community tries to find common solutions to current challenges and examines economic development of the whole world. The chairman of the UN General Assembly, Peter Thompson, in his video address from the UN headquarters in New York, emphasized the importance of the forum. And congratulations to the government of the Republic of Kazakhstan for once more organizing the Astana Economic Forum, bringing world leaders together to discuss global economic trends and challenges and opportunities. I recall the vibrancy of this international gathering from my own attendance of the Astana Economic Forum in 2013, while serving at the United Nations as the president of the Group of 70 Cities between East and West. Kazakhstan is uniquely placed to host these critical global discussions on achieving sustainable economic growth and driving the transition to a green economy. It is a testament to the forum and the importance of the issues at hand that so many representatives from across government, civil society, and business and academia have gathered in Astana. I wish you great success in your discourse. The Astana Economic Forum, like other international summits, sets trends for many years to come. Participants from 100 countries took part in the Astana Economic Forum this year. They were from Europe and Asia, Americas, Africa and Australia. The most numerous delegations came from the United States, the United Kingdom, China, Poland, Turkey and Russia. There were no accidental participants or bystanders at the forum. The criteria for invitation of the delegates had been their enormous expertise. These people are actively engaged in the topics of the agenda. Along with the foreign experts, local panelists took part in the discussions. The dense Astana Economic Forum attracted its targeted audience around a specific and focused, yet universally urgent theme – green economy and technologies. Among the topics they usually debate at the forum are very important for Kazakhstan and the whole world issues. The forum is resulted in signing memorandums, treaties and agreements. The delegates here often summarize with some ideas that then are put into life. We appreciate this year's speaker's list, very qualified experts, economists. 36 panel sessions focused on the economic topics urgent for Kazakhstan and the whole world. 
next chapter of globalization, time of uncertainty, funding and investments in green economy, digital transformation in the world economy, one belt, one road driver of global economy, World Bank, Kazakhstan System Diagnostics. As part of this and many other sessions, delegates discuss the prospects for sustainable growth of the world economy in the coming years, the impact of global trends on the economy of Kazakhstan and the country's draft strategic development plan until 2025. The economy is changing, new fields, professions are emerging, as well as new challenges and opportunities. So Kazakhstan faces an ambitious task to maintain its achievements and move forward in a new global reality. This is the task of the third modernization announced by President Nursultan Nazarbayev. The Kazakh government has already started elaborating a strategic development program, which will ensure an economic growth rate at 5.5% by 2025. Recommendations of the experts at the forum could help to reach this goal. The first priority is the growth in labor productivity, technological modernization of the economy. The second priority is the private business development, clearing the field from the huge and clumsy companies that cannot progress and give place to more adaptable business of the 21st century. Next on the list are the investment climate improvement, regional development, and enhancement of the competitiveness of each Kazakhstani citizen individually. And this mission is possible. Kazakhstan has always been able to solve complex problems. The World Bank's comprehensive analysis of the Kazakh's economy confirms this. Vice President Cyril Müller told about the results of this analysis at the forum. From the very first days of independence, Kazakhstan showed a determination to build a prosperous nation and to transform itself. Poverty has been reduced by half just in the past 10 years. A middle class has emerged and the share of the population living on less than $5 a day has shrunk from more than 50% to less than 20% today. In, 20, in 2006, the country moved to upper middle income status. The World Bank's vice president summarized the results of 25-year cooperation with Kazakhstan. Cyril Müller was one of the first World Bank experts who came to Central Asia in 1992. The main priority at that time was to create national institutions for social and economic development. Now the certain performance targets have been achieved. It is time to make new ambitious steps to diversify the economy. This is not my first visit. Uh, I will tell you what I'm most struck by. Uh, when I was a young man, as a young expert at the World Bank, one of my first assignments was to actually work on the countries of the former Soviet Union. I was one of the first World Bank experts to travel to these countries. Each time I visit, what impresses is more, me more, in a way, is really how people seem happier, and the second, much more important, how life is more vibrant. Now looking forward, Kazakhstan wants to be a successful economy and that successful economy wants to be part of a very successful region. Kazakhstan wants to grow by 5% a year and be part of the top 30 countries in the world in the medium term. So it is with that level of ambition that you have to design a program, that you have to identify what you need to do against that level of ambition. So it means actually that Kazakhstan will have to take a lot of actions and be very determined. Commodity super cycle for Kazakhstan is over. It is time to develop private businesses and human capital to rationally use the transport potential. Recommendations from the World Bank were discussed during the first day of the forum. Competent experts consider Kazakhstan not only as the main logistics hub between Asia and Europe, but also as one of the strongest participants of this trade route. Well, the Astana Economic Forum was really a fantastic event. I really enjoyed myself and I also learned a lot. There were many wonderful sessions, excellent speakers, very high level thinking is going on. So Kazakhstan has invested quite a lot on the infrastructure, on railways and on the highway system. 
now needs to take advantage of this infrastructure and provide. Responding to market changes, Kazakhstan is developing renewable energy sources for third consecutive year. It's quite reasonable, given that Kazakhstan in 2015 signed the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which regulates measures to reduce carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from 2020. Now the Ministry of Energy of Kazakhstan is working hard to attract investments in a new economic sector. The amendments to the law of the renewable energy sources will be adopted this year. We will turn from fixed tariffs to the international auctions. Such system will attract big investors. As an example, I can tell you that if the local investors try to realize any project with the solar energy, the price will be 34 tenge, slightly over 10 cents. In Abu Dhabi, the auctions was held in the the cost of electricity was 2.4 cents. Astana Expo 2017 is a new impetus for green technologies development in the Republic. Therefore, the venue of the Astana Economic Forum, the territory of the Expo, had been chosen for a good reason. This is just one of those times when the results matter much more than the process. Sultan Nazarbayev clearly outlined the future of the Expo once the event is over, noting that our Republic was the first among the CIS countries to adopt the concept of transitioning to green economy. With the UN support, we will set up an international center of green technologies and investments on the basis of the Expo. The center's activities will fully correspond to the Green Bridge Partnership Program. The Expo facilities will host also the Astana International Financial Center. The joint activities of the Financial Center and the Center of Green Technologies will give impetus to the development of environmentally friendly businesses business and financing in our subregion. The timeless in the decision-making process and advantages of the Expo legacy was estimated by the head of the world's largest rating agency, Fitch Ratings, James McCormack. I think the International Financial Center, I think the Kazakh government has quite good idea in terms of using it for that purpose, specifically because the government is introducing English law. Now that is a, a legal basis for a financial center which other financial centers in this part of the world don't have. So that's a big advantage, we think, putting in place a legal infrastructure to go along with the physical infrastructure. And you bring those two infrastructures together and there's a real possibility that Astana could be a regional uh, financial hub. Vice President of the Asian Development Bank attended the Astana Economic Forum with a clear purpose to strengthen cooperation between the Financial Institute and Kazakhstan. The Asian Development Bank is ready to support not only the traditional spheres of economy such as agriculture, infrastructure and healthcare, but also the new ones, like the alternative energy. We also will support, you know, this, uh, you know, even like uh, uh, renewable energy, right, uh, and also maybe energy efficiencies. You know, and we talk about the green economy these days, right? So I think uh, ADB certainly can contribute to the efforts, right, for Kazakhstan to be like a, a green economy or you know, something, you know. Right? Special attention during the Astana Economic Forum was paid to the cooperation between Kazakhstan, represented by the Minister of National Economy, with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. The parties conducted 13 various sector reviews on their compliance with OECD standards in the past two years. Kazakhstan country review was carried out in two stages. On the first stage, diagnostics was made. The main obstacles for full realization of the country's potential and economic development were exposed. On the second stage, detailed recommendations in depth analysis on overcoming these obstacles were developed. The Astana Economic Forum is not just a platform for discussion and opinion exchange. It is a platform for building bridges of cooperation, strengthening networking, collaboration capacity building and learning from the best practices in conducting economic reforms. Delegates from Kuala Lumpur, for example, make no secret that Kazakhstan Development Strategy 2050, five institutional reforms program, and the plan of the nation 100 steps have a lot of similarities 
with to the 2020 National Programme of Transformation of Malaysia. This is my first time in uh, visiting Kazakhstan and uh, I'm very impressed with what has happened uh, with the Astana Economic Forum. Uh, I'm also very impressed with the, your president's vision to take Kazakhstan into the top 30 uh, largest economy in the world by the year 20, 2050. But I see a lot of uh, sectors that has synergy between the two countries. Uh, Malaysia is also a very large oil and gas economy, just like Kazakhstan. And we have um, Petronas, our national oil company, which is a Fortune 500 company. Uh, so we have a wealth of expertise when it comes to upstream, midstream, as well as downstream in the oil and gas. And perhaps therein lies an immediate uh, uh, opportunity for collaboration. Uh, the new direction that you are taking, uh, for example, in the, uh, the uh, energy, the new energy or the future energy. Development of multilateral cooperation between Kazakhstan and Malaysia is another significant advantage of the Economic Forum in Astana. Many high-level experts attending the forum were left impressed not only by depth and complexity of the discussions and their urgency, but also by the atmosphere in Astana. Mysterious cities that come out of nowhere, all prepared in, in, the, in, the, in the fairy tales. The whole thing was interesting. Everything was interesting. Uh, people were interesting, but it's mostly, I mean, what's impressive is that place. place. I've never seen a city come out of nowhere like this. And I heard very interesting opinion on globalization, uh, that basically a lot of people who are uh, uh, accused of being against globalization, in fact, mm -hmm. they're just for a uh, moderation of some uh, activities and uh, controlling the side effects. So this is what I learned. I learned a lot about globalization. Also learned the spirit of the Silk Road. Nassim Taleb said Astana for him is a black swan. What is event or occurrence that deviates beyond what is normally expected of a situation and is extremely difficult to predict. Now, after each debate, the forum members continue to speculate what is possible and what is not. I suppose that Kazakhstan will develop its solar energy potential in the nearest future. We often say that it's time to move away from our dependency on the commodities. But the oil industry will drive the world economy in the next 20 years. The share of solar energy will grow, but it will be an addition, not a substitution for traditional fuels. The changes are obvious. The era of the new economic reality is coming and Kazakhstan must be ready for it. Nursultan Nazarbayev noted that the world needs a gradual transition to a new economic model. Finding rational solutions for the global challenges is necessary, noted the Kazakh president. It is necessary to put on the international agenda the need to develop new methods for calculating indicators that measure the wealth of countries and the welfare of their citizens. The GDP indicator has a number of significant flows. It does not reflect the long-term nature of the economic activity. It does not take into account the damage to the environment, including the depletion of natural resources. And it does not reflect the quality of life in a particular country. GDP per capita does not represent the citizens' well-being and it does not take into account the population's stratification by income. The traditional GDP creates a false perception of economic prosperity. I believe that an updated methodology for calculating I think that GDP can be adopted on the basis of green GDP and indices such as the Human Development Index and Better Life Index of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It should adequately reflect the needs for balanced development of countries. The forum participants widely discussed Kazakhstan's response to external challenges amid its efforts to foster technological modernization of its economy and business and develop human capital. As a result, 23 final documents were signed between the Kazakh and foreign companies, including a memorandum of understanding between the United Nations Development Program in the Republic of Kazakhstan 
and Astana city authorities. The statement that was adopted will give impetus to the cities of Kazakhstan to achieve the 11th Sustainable Development Goal, that is ensuring openness, security, resilience and environmental sustainability. The recommendations of the forum experts will help to enhance the effectiveness of anti-crisis measures taken by the Young Republic.